What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers Zai provided. Today, I'm back with another profile piece, but this is a profile piece with a topic behind it. And the topic is, why do they say Neve Bruck from State Property Rockefeller snitched? So we're going to take a look at his situation because recently on the Flip the Script podcast, PD Crack was up there and Queen Flip asked him, asked him a question about the whole Neef Bug snitching situation and PD Crack doesn't go into it too much, but he does acknowledge it to let us know that the situation is real. It did happen, what Oskino said, but he gives his take on how he feels about the situation and how it played out. And, you know, we're going to, I'm going to give you my take and we're going to take a look at, um, was he snitching or was he basically just caught red handed and had to just own up to it and in, in the process threw somebody else under the bus. So the whole situation about Neat Buck snitching really starts to come to the light when Oskino Vasquez, a former member of State Property and Rockefeller, starts to mention it. He starts throwing the snitch word around, saying he told on both from Best Buy. Now everybody on the outside looking in don't really know what's going on. So eventually, after some due diligence on the part of Oskino, he produces the paperwork, the report. Now in the report it says that basically, Os I mean, Neat Buck was at a Best Buy to go buy a computer. While he's at the Best Buy, one of the workers by the name of Blair Bell comes up to him and offers to sell him some credit where he could basically get the computer for half price, you know, and just go outside and give him the cash that he was going to spend. You know, you save half, get to get it for half off, basically. So he ends up swiping two cards. One works, one doesn't. Neef goes to the front of the store to pay for the computer. And while he's doing that, one of the managers of the store comes up and starts questioning him about the purchase. So where eventually Neef says, forget it, you know, say abandons the purchase and just walks out the store. This is where he's at the, outside the store when he's approached by the cops, when the whole thing about him willing to speak to the officer but doesn't want to sign a written statement. You can see it right there on the, pro, on the report, and he basically gives his side of the story where he says he went to buy the computer, he was approached by Blair Bell, he had to look up the, the, the computer in his phone, he was gonna get it for half price, come outside and give him half the money. He tells the cop all this, all this right then and there. So eventually they all get charged, right? This is where it gets a little tricky. They all get charged, and in the report, the deposition, it says something about testify truthfully against Marcus White and Blair Bell. Even though I don't think none of them went to trial or anything, they all had minor charges. So I don't think Neef had to take the stand or anything. But I think from that initial report that he said, that report that the cop made, that he spoke to him, that conversation, because you know, anything you say, it can and will be used against you in the court of law. So just because you're saying something, you could say I didn't say that, but if you said it, and they, put, they could put it in the report. You know what I'm saying? So this is everything. So now... You got the crime all on camera. You got somebody who's involved with the crime giving you a report of basically saying what happened, you know, giving, basically giving you the ins and the outs of how the whole situation went now. Because you can see it on camera, you can't hear it. But he's just telling you what happened. Yeah, he came up to me, offered me this. I told him this. I took his phone, both gave him this out the outside of the store. So he's giving them the whole story, right? Now, eventually, eventually, um, they all end up getting charged. They get like probation and stuff like that. Nothing too serious. And... That's, the, that's all you hear about it for a minute, right? Then eventually Neef, because, you know, Koskino was going crazy, you know, saying it's calling him around, all this other stuff, eventually all on the internet and social media. So eventually Neef makes a response track, you know what I'm saying? Like a clarification track. I wouldn't call it a real diss song because he doesn't really throw too many shots at Oskino besides little little ones, you know what I'm saying? Like little shots here and there, but he's trying to like talk about, he does mention Best Buy and all that, the how he's going to snitch on a Best Buy employee. That's all in the track. You go listen to that if you want. So now after that track, you don't hear about it. After, you know, Oskino comes back with a couple diss tracks and all that, you know, regular music thing back and forth. But after that, you don't hear about it too much. You know, Oskino starts painting, stay proper, they go back on tour, they got to start getting a lot more show dates as a group collectively, you know, because they were one of the best, the biggest groups back then as far as like, you know, not a UGK, 3-6 Mafia, Mob D, we know about those iconic groups, but they had a group, there was a group back then that people was wearing their clothing, they was in one of the biggest labels in the world, Rockefeller at the time. So they was, you know, they known. And as the shows, sing, um, individually they do good show wise, but collectively they now they don't, they're back on like a tour. They're getting a lot more shows at State Property. The group Oskino was not a part of none of them. He really stands in on his square as far as like how he feels towards Beanie and Neef Buck being a rat, and Neef Buck and Oskino and um, Oskino, excuse me, and Beanie Siegel being a thief over the alleged stolen show money. So, and how he doesn't mess with the rest of the members because they're dealing with a rat and they're dealing with a thief that's down the third. So, like I said, you don't hear too much about it. Everything, that's the end of it as far as like after the the, 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 the diss track, whatever you want to call it, they go on tour, Oskino's painting. So now fast forward to recently, PD Crack goes on the state on um, the Flip the Script podcast. Now, it's at the conversation, you know, getting towards the middle, towards the end, that Flip brings up the whole Neat Buck situation with Oskino. PD doesn't want to talk about it at first. He doesn't want to mention it. But 
Flip asks a good question. Is like, why not? You don't feel it's a rat? Do you, or do you? What is your meaning of a snitch? Like, do you feel like it's not snitching? To where PD mentions, you got to look at the situation. Like, what is he telling on? As far as like, if they got everything on camera, they got everything, they see everything. He's just telling them what happened, what he did. He, like, how is that? You know, what I'm saying I can't really say that's telling. Look how minor that is as far as like the situation. So, I want to say that. I get what P. Crack is saying. Basically, he said what he was doing and just they got everything, so he's admitting his fault. But first of all, you supposed to know you don't talk to a cop at all because you, you, you're you not going to be able to talk your way out of the, the, the charge right then and there. And all you did was basically get everybody a charge by confirming it. You know what I'm saying? All they got you was on camera. They don't know exactly what happened. So you got the other two kids a charge. They might have said nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you basically some in some way got... The other dude whose name is Marcus White and the Blair Bell kid, you probably got them strengthen the charges against them by you, you know, corroborating what the police are saying and what the manager in the store is saying. So you guys just, you know, look through the lines, make your own assessment on the situation. Was he snitching? Was he not snitching? But that's this is the reason why a lot of people are saying that Meat Buck ratted or he told or he snitched. You know, so even I call him a rat because it wasn't really a criminal or like a murder or a robbery, but it's something like some type of scamming situation, but he spoke to the police, and in his rep and in him speaking to the police, he threw others under the bus as far as like you know saying their part in the whole situation. So you guys, let me know how you feel. I just wanted to put that out there, being that you know, PD Crack did confirm that the situation is real. You understand what I'm saying? By him talking about it and saying, "Look what happened. Look what he told on. How was that telling?" One thing you could say is that you know a lot of people be like, "Oh, that paperwork is fake. That's not real." He's confirming that the situation did happen. So now that we know that it happened, and Moschino's standing on, he's a rat. PD's like still standing on the side with Neef. Where you at? Where y'all stand? Do y'all feel like he ratted, or y'all that, or y'all feel like he told a little bit, and y'all can still mess with him because it wasn't that serious, or y'all feel like he didn't tell? He just told what he did wrong, and I, and everybody just got in trouble. Everybody got their time. You let me know how y'all feel, man. It's what's the number TV? This is a quick video. Like I said, I'm dropping two more this week. I'm back working full time. So if y'all mess with the channel, like, sub, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I'll be back before you know it, man. Follow the Instagram, too. I'm out of here. Peace.